Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to be reading for you Trouble for Toby, written by written by Janet Reid and illustrated by Amanda Francy. Chapter 1. Toby wanted a pet more than anything else in the world. He thought he'd like a dog or perhaps a rat. He'd even be happy with a hermit crab. When he asked his parents, they always said the same thing. We'll think about it. But if you're but if you're good at school, but Toby had had trouble staying out of well trouble. Even now his mother was reading a note sent from his teacher, Miss Mott. Miss Mott says you put a grasshopper down at down Jenna's back. She said she 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 said as she sank into a kitchen chair. It was an accident, said Toby. I didn't mean to. Toby, you say that every time. What about the time that you put a cockroach in Jackson's pencil case? And, and a snail in Ivy's lunchbox? She sighed at that poor little lizard. And that poor little lizard, it was only trying to hide, said Toby. Mum's lips tightened. Yes, but it hit it Miss Mott's sleeve. Toby, you can't keep doing these things. You, Toby, you can't keep doing things like this. Your father and I kept telling you that. Toby's heart sank. He felt, he felt his face begin to tremble, crumble. Does this mean I can get a pet? Mom reached out and took his hand. Toby, it's not, it's not that we don't want you to have a pet, she said. We're just not sure you're ready to look after one. Not, not with all those silly things you keep doing at school. What if I promise to be good, mumbled Toby. Well, well then we, we would think about it. But, but it would mean no more notes from home from Miss Mott. Do you understand? Toby nodded. He would stay out of trouble. He would show his mom and dad just how good he could be. Chapter two. At lunch time, at lunch time on Monday, Toby went to play in the sandbox. I don't want to get in trouble there, he thought. Not if I play by myself. Then along came Sam. Do you want to play pirates? Sam asked Toby. Okay, said Toby. I'll be the pirate and you can be the ship's captain. Toby picked up a stick, this is my sword, and I order you to walk the plank. Sam laughed and put his hands, on his, Sam laughed and put his hands on his, on his head. He walked along the edge of the sand pit, said Toby. I mean, Toby walked behind him, prodding Sam with his sword so, so very, so ev sword every so often. See shark, see the shark, said Toby. You're, you're going to be their dinner. Oh please, don't feed me to the shark. Toby Jones, put that stick down right now. The bird both of the boys turned to Miss Mott, her black folder tucked under her arm. If she was glaring at her, was glaring down at them. Toby dropped the stick and it landed on Sam's foot. If Sam wobbled and fell on Jenna's sandcastle. Hey, yelled Jenna, Miss Mott turned red and as a lobster. She opened her black folder and held up a yellow card. Oh no. 
Toby gulped. He was ready on a warning. He had been trying to stay out of trouble. He'd have to show Miss Mott he could be good. Toby, Toby turned back to Sam. Let's just be pirates on the beach. Jenna was staring at her ruined sand castle. Toby pointed, pointed to the spade she was holding. Are you using that? Jenna huffled at him, then dropped the spade and stomped away. your treasure, he said. He picked up the spade and handed it to Sam. Dig or I'll bury you alive. Sam dug as fast as he could. Toby found another spade and helped him. The sand flew everywhere. Soon the hole was so reach, was so deep it reached the plastic the the black plastic underneath the sand pit. What is that? Toby cried. No! No treasure! Why, why, you rogues, I'm going to bury you up to your neck. Let, let crabs feed on your nose. No, please don't, Big Sam laughing. But Toby was a furious pirate in the com and he combined and, and Sam jumped into the hole he giggled as Toby scooped the sand over his legs and over his belly and and up over his arms. Toby scooped the sand right up to Sam's neck, then the bell rang. Every, everyone called out Everyone called out Miss Moore and, and she looked straight at Toby. That's you too, Toby Jones. Now Toby dropped his spade and ran to the taps. He washed his hands then he raced up the stairs to his classroom and sat down at his desk. He wanted Miss Mott to see how good he could be. But, but then... But then he looked across the room at Sam's chair. It was empty. Oh no, thought Toby. Just then Mr. Barker, the school's principal, knocked at the door. Toby's inside bounced like a bucket full of jumping feet. at lunchtime, asked Mr. Barker. Miss Mott and Mr. Barker both turned straight to Toby. Oh, said Toby, I've just remembered. He rushed past Miss Mott and Mr. Barker and he bound down the stairs and headed for the sand pit. On the way from home, <coughs> all the way from, from home to school that afternoon, Sam started to laugh. You should have seen Mr. Barker's face when, when he saw my head poking out of the sand, he said. His face went grey like porridge, and I, and I talked to him, and he started wobbling like a jellyfish, like this. Sam wobbled all over the footpath. Toby laughed and wobbled too, but then his face popped up. Sam popped out his cheeks, and his eyes went all squinty. Sam narrowed his eyes and and he stopped and he stomped off to the classroom like this, asked Toby. And and with his cheeks blown out and his eyes narrowed, he stomped he stomped off down the the footpath. Sam Sam ran after him laughing. But but when Toby reached home, he remembered what his mother had said about staying out of trouble. Mr. Barker wag, wagged his finger at Toby and said, if you, if you can't behave properly, you won't be allowed in the sand pit. Then Miss Mott had, to, had, had told the whole class they needed to look after one another at, 
in the playground. She had looked straight at Toby, but she hadn't written a note to his mother. Phew! Chapter 3 At lunchtime the next day, Sam said want to play in the sandpit again. Toby looked over at the sandpits. Lots of kids were playing there already. Miss Mott was there too with her black folder. Toby chewed his bottom lip and looked at the fort. No one, no one was playing on it and he had an idea. I know, he said, let's, play, let's be space warriors and fly through the universe, looking for new planets and, an ali and alien creatures. Toby had seen a program on TV about finding new planets in outer space and he wondered if anything lived on them. What? will we use for our spaceship, Sam asked. That, said Toby, pointing at, at the fort. Come on, let's space walk. Back to our ship before we get stuck in, into a black hole. Toby and Sam twist and turn in slow motion as if they were moving without gravity. Slowly they made their way to the fort and flopped onto the scramble net. Quick, cried Toby. Let's get through this airlock and back to the spaceship. We've got, we've got a planet to explore. The boys clamper, clampered up the net and, and tumbled into the floor of the fort. Sam, you go up the steer. You go up and steer the ship. I'll get, I'll get the landing gear ready, Toby cried. Aye, aye, Captain. Sam climbed the platform at the top of the fort. He grabbed the steering wheel and, and the spaceship dropped towards the planet below. As Toby reappeared in the landing gear, he spotted Jenna stepping into the chain bridge of the fort. She was heading towards their spaceship. Was she an alien creature from, from the planet below? Stop, he called in the loudest voice. Declare yourself. Are you a friend or a foe? Jenna was already halfway across the bridge. Go away, she said, her eyes narrowed. I'm the littlest Billy Goat to drop. And my big brother will get you and toss you into the river. I'm not a troll, he yelled back at her. I'm a space warrior from Earth and, and I demand you turn back or I will or I'll be forced to in and how and how it in how it you. He grabbed the shade and shook the bridge. Jenna tumbled over and lost her balance, and down she went, and she fell right on top of Ivy, who was playing the troll. Wah! They both cried. Toby looked over the side of the spaceship. Miss Mott was glaring up at them. Her eyebrows pulled pulled tightly together. She'd have made a a a big a good big Billy Goat gruff thought Toby, if only she had horns. Toby Jones, get down here now, Miss Mott shouted. Now she looked more, more. Now she looked like an angry troll. It was an accident, stammered Toby as he dropped down from his platform. I didn't mean to do it. He looked at Jenna and I with their eyes were red and tears ran down their cheeks. He felt bad that he had that he had hurt them. Sorry, he mumbled. Only only the time out bench. On the time out bench now, right now, said Miss Mott, her eyes blazing. You're in another warning. Toby sat on the timeout bench. Sam came over and sat on the grass beside him. Sorry, Sam, said Toby with a sigh. It was a good, it was a good game to it was a good game up to then. Yes, said Sam. Then he started to giggle. But did you see how Jenna flattened the troll? Toby's eyes lit up. Yeah, she did. And she was only the littlest Billy Goat Gruff. They both laughed until they saw Mr. Barker walking towards them. That, that was when Toby remembered his promise to his mother. 
the way the way he was he was going he'd never he'd never get a pitch. Chapter four. On Wednesday, Sam asked, "What will we we'll play today?" Not space warrior," said Toby. "It's too dangerous." Yesterday afternoon, Miss Mott rang his mother and told her about Jen and the troll. First of all, Mom had been mad. Then her face dropped and her shoulders sh sagged. Why did you do it, Toby? She asked. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to," said Toby. "I was pretending Jenna was a space alien and trust and to." Trying to get into my spaceship. I didn't know she falls. Toby, you need to think before you do things like that," said Mum. "Otherwise, people will get hurt. Do you understand that?" Toby nodded. He waited for 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 his mother to say no, pet, but she didn't. But Toby saw how disappointed she was. Today, Toby had to stay out of trouble. He chewed his lip and thought hard. What? Want to play circus? Circuses were safe. He'd gone to the circus with Granddad last holiday. It was so safe they didn't even have to use safety net. The two boys went to the sports shed, and Toby found a dusty hula hoop. It could. I could be the lion tamer," said, said, he said, holding up the, holding it up, and you can be the lion and jump on my hoop. At the circus, one of the, one of the clowns pretended, pretended to be the lion tamer, and the other clown pretended to be the lion. Everyone had laughed when they saw the, the clown jump through the hula hoop. Toby ran back to the playground, yelling, "Hoopla, hoopla!" Here comes the circus. Sam followed as Sam followed his arms dangling in front of him as he roared like a lion. Toby held out the hula hoop. Jump, lion! He ordered. Sam gave a fierce roar and jumped and jumped and jumped through the small circle. Then. He sat on the grass and pretended to lick his paw. Again, called Toby, the famous lion tamer. Sam stood up again and jumped through the hula hoop. Soon, soon there were kids standing along. There, soon there, soon kids were standing around watching. Jenna was there too with Ivy. They all, they all clap. They all clap when Sam jumped and Toby, and Toby turned to the audience and bowed. Then he spread his arms wide and said, "Ladies and gentlemen." I will now hold the hula hoop high, and the lion will jump through one last time. Sam looked up and gasped and gasped. He stepped back and I'm tr I'm tired now. I'm gonna lie in the sun. You can't do that," said Toby. "Yes, I can," said Sam. He curled up into a ball on the side of the grass as he rested. His chin on his paws. Wait there," said Toby. He ran. He ran to the sports shed and came back with a with a skipping rope. He flicked it. He flicked it like a like a whip. Like whip through through the hoop of the la through the through the hoop lion through the hoop through the hoop lion called the called he called and Sam sprang to his feet. 
Toby Jones, what are you doing with that rope? Miss Mott stood behind him, her black folder once again tucked under her arm. Toby dropped the rope and said nothing. Miss Mott, he was going to hit Sam with he was going to hit Sam with it, said Jenna. I was not, said Toby, glaring at Jenna. I was just pretending. Miss Mott looked at Toby for a long moment, then said, We'll we'll see that you don't. And she walked away. Can we play now? Jenna asked Toby. Yes, said Toby. Here. He thrust the hula hoop at Jenna and turned to the, and turned to Sam. Come on, Sam. We're we're off to the big top. Toby ran towards the fort, leaving Jenna behind. What's the big top? Sam asked, running after him. It's the big circus tent, said Toby. It's so big that you can hardly see the top. What about me? Called Jenna as Toby and Sam ran to the adventure playground. Toby pretended like he didn't hear her. Toby walked across the chain bridge. This, this is the tightrope, he, he said. Sam followed his arms, stretched out, wobbling from side to side. Next, they swung through the air on the monkey bars. Then they climbed the fort and slid down the fire pole. And now for our final act. Toby cried with, brave, with, with all bravely. Toby cried, We will bravely fly through the air from one side to the other of the big top to the other. How, Sam asked, we'll use a flying fox, of course. Come, come on. They jumped, they jumped onto the low platform. Right, Sam, you go first. I'm good at, I'm not good at this, said Sam. I'll stop halfway. No worries, I'll give you a big push. Are you ready? Sam reached up and grabbed the handle of the flying fox. Okay, he called out, make me fly. Toby gave Sam a enormous push. Sam slapped, Sam sailed across to the other side. Now it's my turn, said Toby, Clam climbing up. Beside him, here, give me a push. Toby gripped the handle of the flying fox and Sam, and Sam gave him the biggest push he could. Off he flew. Toby just as Toby. Off flew Toby, just as Gemma stepped up and yelled in front of him. Look out, yelled Toby. He couldn't stop. Oh no, bang! Jenna toppled backwards. Her arms windmilled through the air. She... She sailed off the platform and thudding onto a soft ball of rubber. Where? she screamed. Her pigtails were messed up and her nose was red. Toby thought she looked a bit like a circus clown. Miss Mott came running. She helped Jenna and glared at Toby. She pinched her lips pinched tight. Oh no, thought Toby again. This can't be good. It was an accident, he stammered. She got in the way and I couldn't stop. His stomach leapt as Miss Mott opened her black folder. She clicked. She clicked her pen and began writing. Toby knew she was writing his name. Time out bench now, she snapped, and you too, Sam. You're, you're not to move from there until the bell rings. Toby and Sam trudged to the time out bench. They, they sat and they watched the other kids play. Then Toby started to giggle. Did you see the look on Jenna's face when she saw me coming? Yes, said Sam. 
I thought her eyes were going to explode. Just then, Jenna walked past with her friend Ivy. She put her hands on her hips and poked her tongue out. Mr. Barker appeared... <coughs> Appeared around the corner. Jenna, Jenna, he said, it's not polite to poke tongues. Then he saw Toby and Sam sitting on the time out bench. He closed his eyes and groaned. Later that afternoon, Miss Mott told the whole class they had to be care they had to be more careful in the adventure playground, especially near the flying fox. She said, if someone's flying towards you. They might be able to stop in time. This time, Miss Mott looked at Jenna instead of Toby. Toby felt sorry for Jenna. She had some leaves stuck in her hair, and her nose was still red. When he and Sam walked to the school gate that afternoon, Toby made a decision. Let's play somewhere else tomorrow, he said, a long way from the adventure playground. He really wanted to stay out of trouble. Chapter 5 The next day, Toby and Sam walked past the adventure playground. They saw Miss Mort talking to Jenna and Ivy. Let's go, said Toby, before they see us. They ran until they reached the corner of the classrooms. Where are we going, asked Sam. The Tranquility Garden said Toby. That's boring, said Sam. There's nothing to do there but sit around. We could we could look for bugs, said Toby. I don't like bugs, said Sam. Well, let's be park rangers, suggested Toby. We could be searching for rare animals. Sam screwed up his face. Come on, I'll race you, yelled Toby. Before Sam could argue, the tranquility garden was almost empty. Three grade six girls sat huddled in a in the bale hut they they were writing notes and giggling they didn't even look up as the park rangers walked by toby hoped uh, along the stepping stones i mean not hurt hopped along the stepping stones sam followed him toby jumped the tricky, the trickling stream, and then, and that, through the middle of the garden. Sam jumped. Sam jumped. Sam jumped it too. Toby dropped to the ground and and peered into the water. Look, look, there's a dragonfly. He said. No bugs, said Sam firmly. No bugs, said Sam firmly. But but there are animals too, said Toby. You get into trouble when you catch bugs, Sam reminded him. Remember last week when you put a grasshopper down Jenna's? Come on. Let's go on a safari, said Toby, jumping to his feet. He didn't want to remember that, that grasshopper crawling down Jenna's back. It had hopped out of his hand and landed on Jenna's neck before disappearing under her collar. Miss Mott thought he had done it on purpose, but he hadn't. Toby and Sam followed the narrow windy path through the thick fountain grass until they found a clearing shade by by a tail woolly o a woolly wee I mean a willow wee gum a willowy gum, gum tree. Sam threw himself down under the tree. Toby, Toby got down on his hands and knees and looked under rocks and and picked up leaves. No bugs, said Sam. Then his eyes crinkled and he started to chuckle. Remember when you put that huge cockroach in Jackson's pencil case? Toby remembered. 
so did his mom and Miss Mo and and Jackson had avoided him since then. Do you think Jackson will ever play with me again? Toby asked. Of course he will, said Sam, taking off his hat and dropping it into it on into his lap. He stretched out his leg and learned and leaned back against and leaned back against the tree trunk and his and closed his eyes. That's when that's when that's what that's what that's that's that was when Toby saw the spider a size the size of a of a saucer sneaking down a, the tree trunk the trunk of the tree. It reached Sam's head and placed one leg on its curly hair, then another leg, then one more. Ah, Sam! Ah, Sam! Hmm, Sam answered, his eyes still closed. Do you like spiders? Toby chewed his lip as, as he watched the spider place two more legs on his friend's head. No, why, Sam said. Do you? Yes, yeah, sort of. The spider waved another leg in the air and placed it on Sam's head. It was thinking of getting one as a pet. If he, if he could just catch one, maybe it could be his pet. Sam shrugged. Well, don't expect me to look after it when you go on holiday. Toby took off his hat and edged closer. I need to be quick, thought Toby, before Sam realizes what I'm doing. The spider took another step forward. It was completely on Sam's head. Toby lunged to try to cover. He tried to cover the spider with his hat. Sam jumped. Ah! He screamed, pulling away. What are you doing? The spider ran. It, it ran down the side of Sam's head, into, the, into his shoulder and down his arm. Ah, he screamed again and flicked out his arm. The spider flew through the air and landed on a nearby bush. What was going, what's going on here? It was Mr. Barker. He stood towards them. Jenna and Ivy and some of their friends were following him. What's all this noise? He had a spider. He had a spider, Sam said, pointing at Toby. With shaking fingers. And he put it on my head. No, I didn't, said Toby. It was it was already there. It was just, I was trying to catch it. Just then, Toby saw the spider darting along the branch of the bush. He leapt towards it in, hat in hand. The spider, the spider danced sideways and jumped, and jumped, <coughs> and jumped. It landed right on Mr. Bake in on Mr. Barker's nose. Get it off! Get it off! Mr. Barker, Mr. Barker yelled, sweeping his face. The spider had had the spider had had enough. It jumped onto the tree and ran up the trunk. A, a heavy hand rests on Toby's shoulder. I didn't. It, I did not do it. Cried. I did not do it, he cried. The spider came down the tree and climbed on Sam's head. It was just, I was just trying to catch it.
Mr. Barker didn't believe him. No excuses, Toby Jones. My office now. As Toby shrugged off, he heard Jenna say, Well, we'll take Sam for a drink, Mr. Barker. Toby didn't see Sam again that, uh, that day. He had to stay outside Mr. Baker's office all afternoon and, and to do worksheets until the bell rang. By the time he had reached the classroom, everyone had left, even Sam. As Toby walked home by himself, he wondered, he wondered if Sam would ever want to play with him again. And he thought of his mother. Mr. Barker was, was going to ring her, and Toby knew he would have never get a pet now. If only he had caught that spider. Chapter 6 On Friday, Miss Mott moved Toby's desk to the front of the room. Toby wanted to tell Sam he was sorry, but his friend was still sitting up the back. He'd have to wait until lunchtime. He'd have to... But at lunchtime, Miss Mott said, Toby, you're eating lunch in here with me today. Then you're... Then you ought to go to the library for, for the rest of break. As, as he walked to the library, Toby, Toby saw Sam, Sam, Sam playing with Jackson. I'll just go and sit down and see him, thought Toby. Then Miss Mott walked past her, walked past her black folder tug under her arm. She glared at Toby and called and pointed towards the library and 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 shoved away. He he headed up the path and and past the tranquility garden and the great six girls were were still in the bell hut giggling. Toby wondered if they'd been riding if they'd been there all night. He, he trailed his fingers across the bushes beside, beside the library and bumped his head along the stone fence of the courtyard. He pulled, he pulled, he pulled faces at his reflection in the window before moving towards the big green door. Miss Wordsworth, the librarian, looked over at her reading glasses. Ah, Toby, she said, you understand you're here, you're, you're to be on your best behavior today. Yes, Miss Wordsworth, he drawled out of word, out of words. Would you like to, would you like me to find you a book to read? Maybe one about spiders, she asked, her eyes burning. No thanks, Miss Wordsworth, he had said, trying, trying to smile back. He liked Miss Wordsworth. She knew, she knew he wanted a pet more than anything in the world. And she always showed him any new pet books that came into the library that, that always made him feel special. Last week, she gave him one about unusual, unusual pets. A girl in Darwin kept a pet scorpion. Perhaps he'd look at uh, he'd look at that book again. Well, he reached at the non-fiction section. The non-fiction the non-fiction section. He could he could he couldn't find it, so he sat on the floor and ran and ran his finger along the along the book on along the the book in the bottom shelf. What are you looking for? came a voice from the boat. Toby looked up and there was Jenna. Go away, he said. I'm always in trouble when you're around. Come, it's not my fault, said Jenna, and, and she stomped away. Toby found 
a, a book about circuses and took it. He hoped Jenna had left the library. With his book under his arm, Toby headed towards the library courtyard. It was cool, shady, and, and hidden by the bushes. Toby hardly and hardly and hardly anyone used it. He pushed the green door open. Jenna was sitting on the wooden bench of Indian amongst the bushes. She was reading a book. She didn't even look up when he opened the door. Toby sighed as he turned to leave. Something caught his eye. Um, a, mo a movement, leathery skin. Toby froze. A big brown snake slithered out of the bushes. His legs turned to jelly and his brain went numb. Then he knew he'd have to distract it, but how? Just then, Jenna looked up. Go away, Toby Jones, she said. I got here first. She kicked one leg right out, right out in front of her, and the snake reappeared up. Toby took one aim with the only weapon he had, the circus book, and threw it at as hard as he could at the snake. Run, he screamed. He reached out and grabbed Jenna's arm and hold her through the air, through the door, the, the doorway. He landed the door on the on the floor of the library with a thud. Toby landed right on top of on top of her. Jenna wailed. Kids came running, and Miss Wordsworth called in a loud voice. What's going on? Toby looked back at at the open door. What if the snake comes inside? He jumped and slammed the green door shut. Wordsworth pointed her finger at him. You were meant to stay out of... A snake, he cried. There was a snake out there. All the kids gasped. Toby, said Miss Wordsworth. If you... It's true, sobbed Jenna. She was rubbing her shoulder where, where she had landed. It was a big brown and it hissed at me. Oh goodness, stammered Miss Wordsworth. Call the o call I'll call the office. The kids pushed her she pushed her way through the crowd of kids. She ran to a desk and picked up the phone. She jabbed the buttons and screamed, We need help down right here. Ne right now. Back in the class that back in the class that afternoon, the intercom rang. Toby Jones to go to Mr. Baker. Mr. Barker's office said Miss Mott as she as she put the reverser down. Toby's heart dropped. He'd be in trouble for wrecking the library book or hurting Jenna or maybe both. When he reached the office, he knocked on Mr. Barker's door. Come in and barked. Come in, barked Mr. Barker. Toby peered through around the doorway. Mr. Barker was busy writing. He didn't even look up. Toby waited, his insides bouncing. He was never going to get a pet now. Sit down, said Mr. Barker. He said, he, he still, he still hadn't looked up yet. He just kept writing. Toby, Toby groaned on his bottom lip. As, as he perched out of the edge of the nearest chair, his legs jiggling like a jellyfish. Mr. Barker looked up. Toby, he, he cried, I've rung your pants. Toby showed his jaw. He tugged his shaking hands between his knees. Then Mr. Barker said something amazing. 
I have to say, Toby, I'm very proud of what you did today. It was your quick thinking that saved Jenna. Her parents were very grateful when I told them what you've done. And your parents were very proud of you too. Toby's head shot up and his mouth dropped open. Was this supposed to wasn't he supposed to be in trouble? What about the book he threw? What about Jenna's shoulder? Oh, don't worry about that. About the book, said Mr. Barker. As he threw, he had, as he, as he, as he threw, he had read Toby's mind. Miss Wordsworth said she can fix it, and Jenna's shoulder, it's a lot better now. She has a cold pack on it. Toby started Toby stared at Mr. Baker. He wasn't in trouble somewhere in the back of his mind. I'll maybe get a pet after all. As, as he made his way back to the classroom, Toby noticed a van in, in the car park. A big carpet snake was, was, painted, was painted along the side and, and, the, and the doors were open wide. The man in green overalls jumped out. Hey, he called. You're, you're the kid who scared the snake away, aren't you? Toby nodded. Earlier he had, he had watched the man go into the courtyard and just a few minutes later the snake. He, he just a few minutes later came back, come back out with a snake full, with a sack full of snake. Toby wondered. How anyone could be that great? Would you like to see our snake up close? The snake handler asked. Toby took a step. The snake handler laughed. It's okay. It can't hurt you. It's in a glass cage. Toby walked to the to the back of the van. He gasped. The snake coiled up in like like a garden hose in a glass tank. Its eyes staring back at him. Toby gave a shiver. Do you like snakes? He asked. This asked the snake handler. The snake handler gave Toby a secret smile. Yes, he said. You know when I was a, a kid about your age, I went to a reptile park and and that was and that was that. I just knew I wanted to work with snakes. He grinned at Toby and added, "It's pretty good job if you like snakes." Chapter 7. On Monday morning, there was a whole school assembly. When Toby's class walked in, he saw his mother and father sta standing at the side of the hall. Granddad was, was with them. They all waved to him. Toby was puzzled. Why were they here? Everyone stood for Advanced Australian Fair. And stood and and the school song and and the school song then Mr Barker took the microphone and he started talking about soldiers who fought in the war and how brave they are and how brave they were. Toby looked about to see if there any soldiers in the audience, but the only one person in uniform was the was the was the cops, was the school's adopter cop. Constable Brett sitting up sitting up on the stage. But Mr. Barker was was Mr. Barker talking about him? Mr. Barker said sometimes people do brave things even if they don't mean to be brave. That doesn't make them any less a hero, he told the school. And 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 it just happens so so the school and just so it happens. We have we have one of those very brave. Toby stopped listening. He had a gecko dart across the floor. If he was quick, he could. Toby Jones and Jenna Martins, could we please have both of you up to the stage, please? Mr. Barker, said Mr. Barker. Toby was still watching the gecko. Sam poked him in the back. 
Toby, that's you, said Sam. Toby looked up. Everyone in his class was staring at him. He looked at, at Miss Mott and she pointed to the stage. They want, they want you to, they want you up there, she hissed. Toby looked, Toby looked at the stage. Miss, Mr. Barker was looking right at him too. As many of you know, as many of you know, continued Mr. Barker. Toby Jones showed great courage last Friday when he saved Jenny from being bitten by a venomous snake. Inside the library courtyard, without fear for, for his own safety, he distracted the snake and pulled Jenna to safety. That was, that was what I call brave. Toby stood up, stood up on his legs, forking. He could feel the whole school looking at him. His face felt hot and his hands were shaking. But somewhere, deep inside, he felt warm as, as he thought someone had just lit a candle in there. climbed the stairs to the stage. He he wondered how how he could feel scared and excited at the same time. Constable Brett took something from his pocket and walked towards him. Well done, he said. Well done, Toby, he said, shaking Toby's hand. He pinned a badge onto Toby's shirt and it said Bravery Award and his and his name and his and the date engraved underneath. We need brave people like you in the police force. Constable Brett said, think about that when you grow up. Toby didn't want to be a policeman when he grew up. All weekend he had only thought about a snake handler's words. Mr. Barker turned back to the microphone. Jenna stepped behind him, holding, holding, holding something close to her chest. She beamed, she beamed out at the audience as Mr. Barker said, "We'd also like to present Toby with his book that has been donated by the snake handler." Jenna held up the book to show everyone before handing it to Toby. Everyone clapped and cheered, and some and some big kids whistled through their fingers. Jenna gave him a hug, right in front of the whole school. Toby blushed to the roots of his hair. Miss Wordsworth took photos and said, and said we would send them to the local paper. When Toby eventually sat back down with his class, he looked at his new book, Snake, Snake Owner's Guide. He hoped he opened it and looked at the first photo of a black and brown snake. He read the words underneath. The spotted python is often kept as a pet with his whole body tingled. At lunchtime everyone wanted to play with Toby, but Sam grabbed Toby's arm and said, Want to play cricket with me and Jackson? As as they all walked onto the oval, Jackson said, Sam Jackson said, Sam says Spider jumped on Mr. Baker's, Mr. Barker's face. He tossed the ball into the air and caught it again. We've, we've loved to play, we've loved to have seen that. Yeah, laughed Sam. He was yelling and screaming and he was hitting himself, wasn't he, Toby? They were all, they were all laughing so much, they didn't see Mr. Barker stand in front of them. They stopped laughing and got Mr. Barker didn't look mad. Instead, he said to Toby, I guess your parents are proud of you. Toby beamed on that weekend. Mom and Dad said they thought he was ready to look after a pet. What they said, they said he should think hard about what sort of pet he would like. They said, uh, I, could get, I could get a pet. He told Mr. Barker, and I and I'm going to get a python. So can 
So can I. Le so I can learn how to look after snakes. Mr. Barker's lips did an odd sort of dance, and, and his eyebrows wiggled up and down. Well, good luck with that, he said, eventually that weekend, and walked away. A pet python, said Sam, cool. Can I look after it when you go on holidays? And that's the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed the story that I just read for you. And if you want to listen to more of my stories, please like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.